Welcome to Getting Real with Real Estate with Danielle Kempf and Jim Kempf, St. Louis's favorite father-daughter real estate team. Your source of real estate information in the greater St. Louis area. All right, ready to roll? Ready to roll. Uh, ready? Welcome. Yeah, I'm ready. You okay. ready, Tom? Yeah, you know it. <laughs> awesome. We've got a special guest today. Welcome to the show, everybody, uh, to our listeners over in Europe. Thank it's you. Internationally, I know. We're, We're going international. I'm not licensed in Europe, just for the record. <laughs> oh, for the record. Okay, good job. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's 2026 awesome. goals. Uh, 20. There you go. That's good. Yeah. We'll, maybe, we'll do to it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe we should do the same thing. That'd be great. Yeah. So we got a special guest today. Uh, I want to thank Todd Birkenholz with Gen X Consulting mm -hmm. for coming mm -hmm. over today. Todd is a wealth consultant. Uh, Todd, for just for full disclosure, Todd is my wealth consultant. Helps me uh, stay straight and hopefully be able to retire someday. You're gonna retire. <laughs> I don't know you know how it is in the time. industry. You can work know. forever. I know. Well, I can just yeah, look at your broker. He's, he's a your grinder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just keep going. Yeah. So uh, uh, we're going to talk a little financial planning kind of stuff today. Mm -hmm, yeah. But before we get really started, though, um, we, we always we always we don't really have, have a joke today. No, but, not really a joke, but more just a funny quote. It's apropos to our conversation. Here's your big word. That's for my the big day. word. Oh man, how about that? Can you spell? It? I, can, <laughs> no, I can't. There's a silent S in there. I spelling. <laughs> I cannot spell that. No. All right. So our quote is: Inflation is when you pay fifteen dollars for the ten dollar haircut you used to get for the five dollars back when you had hair. <laughs> <laughs> and those words of wisdom are from Sam Ewing. Yeah, they are, <laughs> and they are very true. Because I, how much do you pay for I haircut? I pay like I think it's like seventeen bucks, you know, for yeah. and for cutting this. You yeah, know? it's like I, I keep asking my barber for a discount, but he never. He like, never oh, gives you one. So. All right. Well, hey, before we get started, do we need to like talk really fast about like disclosures about how we're not oh, making financial pigs? Yeah, I think blah, blah, blah. the generic disclosure for our industry is that <laughs> anything. This is not you no know, directed financial advice. This is for, I guess, informational and entertainment purposes only. Perfect. There That's we go. Perfect. That's, That's all I got. Great, good yeah. job, man. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Where I, I this is kind of um, I don't know. It's a subject near and dear to my heart. Honestly, I I, I think it's awesome. Um, and and I've known Todd now for like what six years now I guess yeah, since 2018. Yeah. And you talk about a guy who's passionate about what he does. Mm -hmm. uh, Todd is is it for sure. So I guess start us. Let's just kind of talk a little bit about yourself. Tell us you know kind of your history. And okay. All that good stuff. All right. So I uh, have a finance degree from Truman State. Um, graduated during. Uh, Right before 9-11, so I had like a, the economy, if you remember, was kind of crappy back yeah. then. So graduated, didn't really have a job, took a temp job, that went away with 9-11. Um, then my more like grown up jobs, I ended up at investment an investment banking job downtown with the former A.G. Edwards, and then that was no good, not a fit for me, went to the commercial banking world in hmm. whatever year that was, 2004, I guess it probably was. Right. Um, did some commercial banking. Meanwhile, um, my mother was a financial advisor, a career changer right. since um, 1998. She started her practice and she had been kind of giving me the elbow, um, which is also <laughs> apropos for this conversation. Like, yeah, hey, right, right. great career path, you know, think about it. I'm like, I don't need your help. I can do it on my own. I'm working middle management for a bank. They're going to give me a gold watch and a crappy pension one day. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, long story short, got to 2015, and um, I was actually having New Year's Day football watching cocktails with my brother-in-law. He's like, you should at least have the conversation. I'm like, all right. Yeah. So I did, and I ended up joining my mother's firm. Uh, it's a national firm. Yep. So she was in an office in Columbus, Ohio. I started my career here. We worked separately. Oh, okay. So I started in St. Louis, and I did the whole building and prospecting and asking my friends and having those conversations. Yep. So did that, uh, started in 2015. We, we officially became business partners in 2018, awesome. formed a limited wow. partnership. And um, then fast forward, she's retiring. And she's like, before I retire, you probably, if you want to stay here for the rest of your career, that's great. But if you don't, right. probably should help move clients before uh, sure. I get out of the business. So we ended up moving to um, where I'm at now, Gen X Consulting, yeah. right in the middle of the pandemic, right in the yeah. middle of April 2020. <laughs> so Great would not advise, yeah. but you know, there's never a, a wrong time to make the right decision. Yeah. So I've been very happy there. And so we're independent wealth advisors and we handle, um, you know, comprehensive financial planning and yeah. asset management and all sorts of that stuff. That's awesome. Cool. Great story. So what you work for your mom, you work, work for your for dad. Your dad. Yeah. Family that's businesses. Kind of yeah, that's kind of cool. And someday your dad will so, work for you, you know that's so, <laughs> well, He already does. He yeah. already does. <laughs> what do you mean? But someday. Exactly. Let's start, that was 2020. 20, March 2020. Yeah, yeah March yeah. like 2nd, you know, the day she got her license, I started yeah. working for her, I think. Or even before that. So, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I guess kind of for starters, so we, well, for me, everybody's a young person. Yeah. It seems like that we deal with. But we, we, we have a lot of clients that are younger, right, that are kind of getting mm -hmm. started and all that stuff. 
And I think a lot of them have a perception that, man, you got to have a lot of money or a lot of extra cash or be rich to have a financial advisor in your life. What are your thoughts on that? I don't think so. I don't think so either. And I know there's places out there that have minimums, and that's fine. Yeah. Um, uh, that's not how we've ever operated. I, I think it's so valuable when they're, when people are young to get their them pointed in the right direction. Yeah. And um, so how we operate, and a lot of firms like us operate, are we, we work when we manage someone's assets, like we open an account, an investment account of some kind for them. Mm -hmm. um, we get paid on a percentage of the assets. So when the dollars are small, their fees small. Yeah. When the dollars get bigger, their fee gets bigger. But um, yeah, and I think that's really a big hurdle to get over is the, the, the mindset that, you know, by the time they think they have enough money, I mean, yeah. you know, the, the time has passed and it's yeah. kind of hard to make up for that lost time. It's certainly, in our opinion, in my opinion, um, more detrimental to waste time than, than waste yeah. money. That would seem yeah. like that's one of your biggest, right, allies is time, right? Where it is. Yeah. Uh, even if you start small, yes. right? Um, yeah, it's kind of habits, I guess, right? Like it's habits. A lot of things we talk about in our business, like lead generation, you get into habits of doing things, and I think it's just, is that exactly kind of the same exactly thing? good financial habits. That's probably one of the biggest um, challenges to overcome when when folks come to me for the first time in their you know late forties, fifties, sixties, and they're like, I've never met with an advisor. And here's what I have, and then invariably it's like, man, I wish I'd have started. Early. I wish I'd have started younger. <laughs> um, but yeah, the the power of having a lot of time to let your money work for you is right. unmatched. Right. I mean, it's the, I think, I forget who it was, maybe it was like Einstein called it the eighth wonder of the world is yeah. compounding interest. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think sure. that's, you know, half of the quotes are made up or whatever. Anyway, <laughs> but, but, it, but it's true, you but know, and we have all sorts of resources to show you, know, you just you see the graphs from like business. Yeah. You see the graphs of if you start twenty dollars exactly. when you're twenty, yeah. how much that starts versus yeah. you know you're investing one hundred and twenty when you're sixty. Yeah. How it doesn't even yeah. match. It, it doesn't it, come close. Not even close. Yeah. Right. Time is uh, your best friend. Yeah. 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 And and uh, uh, I guess kind of relative to that, I guess people can start just by a few bucks every month, kind of thing. Yeah. Right? When, when they get started, uh, I, re I remember doing that myself when I was man. I was still working part time, going through grad school. And every, you know, every uh, paycheck, I would just pay myself 25 bucks. That's exactly right. And put it in a little mutual fund. And, yeah. you know, it's just like, but over time, like you said, it just kind of keeps going and going yeah. and going. And then pretty soon you have something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, it not. grows. Um, we're big believers in, you can call it a lot of things, delayed gratification. Um, <laughs> yeah. Force scarcity is another term for, but you paying yourself first is the big concept. Right. Yeah. Is before you let it get too comfortable in your bank account, um, you kind of automate that stuff mm -hmm. and you pay yourself first. And then like when you get an, a, a, a big boy, big girl job and they're, you have a 401k or whatever kind of plan you have and they're going right. to give you free money. Like, by right. all means, yeah. you got to take advantage of the free stuff. Right. Yeah. So for, well, like we're obviously, we're not W2 employees, but mm -hmm. for those folks, that would be probably your best, right? Your best choice, best thing to do first, I guess. For yeah. Them, right. Well, Jump in there, max that sucker out. Right? Yeah. Exactly. Um, even before that, we recommend having an emergency fund. Sure. Um, oh, in case, great idea. yeah, like a car breakdown. We don't want the derail your financial plan. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that happens. It happens. That and you see it too. And you know, working yeah. with some of the people that you put in homes and help find yeah. homes, like yeah. maybe you don't. You know, you see, like the air conditioner broke or something. You know, yeah. that you probably hear stories like that. So that kind of thing can, if you don't have enough of emergency fund, that can really derail you, right. cause you to make some um, choices that are hard to get out of. You know, right. accumulating yeah. credit card debt, mm -hmm. not paying it off month to month. Right. Um, that can kind of derail you. It's hard to generate, you know, this great wealth plan when people are saddled yeah. with crippling debt. Yeah, right, right, right. Do you see a lot of folks come to you with just like, I mean, with, with credit cards yeah. Oh, yeah. maxed out, you kind of help them with a game plan? To we, get, yeah, we, we have, that, right, yeah, absolutely. We have some cash flow tools. That's definitely not how I prefer to work with people, but I mean, I want to help people. And that's yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah. that's just helping them with our, we have a non-proprietary cash flow spreadsheet. But the good news is what it does, it, it itemize, it kind of gets things organized. Yeah. So, and it's really, if you've ever like pulled three months of your bank history and use and credit card use, <laughs> it's, it's eye-opening. And it's, it's, and that's a fun conversation. We get like a husband and wife in the room and they're like, you spend too much at Target. Well, you uh, Starbucks yeah. habit. Well, you golf all the weekend. I'm like, I am not a miracle. <laughs> But, You're just sitting back. Yeah, but it's I think it's um, knowledge is power, and seeing yeah. the data and seeing where your dollars are going is 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 impactful. It's yeah. helpful, oh, yeah. um, and then we can work with that. And yeah. I know I don't I don't tell people how to spend their money. That's right. not what I want to do. Right. Um, right. I will help them go through their stuff and look at it. I don't I don't you know I don't have a dog in the fight about how they spend right. their money because right. you don't. Um, but 
to try I, to help them. I can help them educate. Yeah. Like, there's an opportunity cost. If you spend this dollar on that, then you yeah. can't spend it on this. So what's important? And that's right, kind of right, how right. we start with people. Yeah, $5 Starbucks every day. If you invested that, what's that worth? Right? Um, if you invested that's in wild. Starbucks at the 1992 well, yeah. IPO, <laughs> we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. <laughs> We'd be on an island with a boat drink somewhere. Right, exactly. <laughs> that's funny. So uh, I guess a question I had, too, is like I hear a lot of people that want to jump in the market, jump out of the market, that stock's hot, this stock's yeah. hot. Thoughts on, on market timing? I, I mean, I don't... Yeah, well, obviously, we don't, we're not big proponents of market yeah, timing. I yeah, I think so, right? Yeah, there's some old, like, cliches, but they, they still hold true, you know? It's time in the market, not timing the market. Yeah. We've all heard that. Yeah, yeah. Um, we don't believe that the market can be accurately timed or, or forecast, and the same with the economy. And sometimes the market right. and the economy aren't yeah. as related as people would like them to be. Yeah. So we're, we're big believers in... Um, designing an investment strategy that's in line with your goals and risk tolerance and time horizon. Sure. And then it's it's my job and my team's job, Nick and Sarah back at the office, um, to educate folks on, we're gonna see market volatility. Right. Things are gonna get hot, they're gonna cool off. Um, you know, just in the last, just since I've moved to Gen X, so just since, you know, the pandemic. Right. You know, we had a 30 some odd percent market drop in five weeks. Right. And terrifying, you know, there no one right. knows what's going on. We have this global thing, the economy gets shut down, asset prices fall. And then wouldn't you know, it's six months after the bottom in March of 23, or March 23rd of 2020, the market had recovered. Six months and a day, it was back to where it was. Yeah. And then wow. it's taken off from there. And then obviously in 2022, was kind of a crappy year. 23 was good. This year's off to a good start. So that's the nature of it. Yeah. And the longer we um, expand out the time horizon and mm -hmm. like, you know, broad focus, the better the picture looks for people. Sure. But timing is, it's a dangerous game. I would agree and yeah. you know that kind of gets into the, the trading versus investing conversation. Right. With our clients, we're definitely not traders. We're not right. trying to buy something on a Monday and make money by right. Thursday. <laughs> like that's, right. And I, I can't do that. So there yeah, are some yeah, folks yeah. out there that are maybe better than others at picking stocks and getting the timing yeah. right, but doing it over and over and over, that's like hedge fund area and that is not, right, right. that's not what I feel comfortable It's like going to the yeah. boat, I think some ways it yeah. feels like to me. Yeah, and we hear the, the, the G word a lot. Like it feels like gambling. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, but again, the impetus, the onus, whatever the word I'm looking for, it's on us to educate them that, you know, at the end of the day, it might feel like it because, you know, people, when they don't understand something, mm -hmm. they get a little scared and they sure. just kind of draw back. So it's our job to educate them that, hey, when we're investing in a stock fund, just as an example, like the S&P 500, not a recommendation, no. uh, <laughs> stock fund, what we're really investing, we're getting a little piece of ownership of 500 of the best companies in right. the history of the world. Right. Best financially managed, um, the, the best management team, sure. um, most innovative. Yes. And so when we can kind of position it that way, I think people have a better understanding of, okay, so maybe the stock market's not this scary place to live. Right. Yeah. Right. So you talked a little bit about stocks. What are some other ways that you can like diversify? Do you do anything with, like good. crypto or like what's like we like are like the NFTs like the yeah. Little photos? Yeah. So yeah. I don't have any experience with NFTs. So the, the crypto has been really interesting. So I, I mean, everyone's heard of um, Bitcoin. I mean, that's the big yeah. one. And there's yeah. been like 25 other coins, Dogecoin. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's one with a dog. I can't think of what it is, but Shibu Inu or something. Like that. Anyway, but yeah. So I don't. So we've had that in our portfolio. We've had a yeah. crypto, uh, we had had a Bitcoin um, fund for a while in our portfolio, just a teeny tiny sliver. Yeah. Um, you know, with anything, whether it's crypto or a, a individual stock or even a fund, like mm -hmm. we want to make sure that people aren't overexposed and have too much concentration in one thing, like all yeah. your eggs in one basket. So yeah. to your point, yes, we, we champion diversification and it should be aligned with your goals and risk tolerance and time horizon, mm -hmm. all the boring stuff, but it works. <laughs> um, but I, I do have clients that want crypto and I, I just like word of caution, you know, you, go in with eyes wide open, like for someone else smarter than me in the crypto space can educate me on, you know, the value of it. Um, as, as far as I know right now, my personal opinion, and it doesn't mean much, is that we're operating under what I would call the greater fool theory. So I just think that it's worth something today. I think, I don't know why, but it might be worth something more tomorrow. Right. So therefore, I'm going to hold this asset. Right. Um, full stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, we, you know, it, and people hear it and there's, there's trends and hot stocks yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you watch cnbc long enough which i do every day all day long it's on in the background <laughs> it's 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 you know background noise it's the symphony of my life at this point but i just want to hear what like mainstream people are hearing right. from like yeah. what they consider the financial you know geniuses right right, right and right. they talk about crypto and they talk about tesla and they talk about google and talk about all this stuff all the time all the time all the time yeah um but we're still big believers in diversification so those are some of those are fantastic companies and there yeah, are a absolutely. lot of them are in our portfolio in one way or another right, right. but um 
diversification. And then, you know, you kind of asked about stocks are one way. You know, there's kind of three main asset classes out there. There's stocks, okay. which means you own something. There's mm-hmm. bonds, which mean you lend to somebody. Mm-hmm. And I think if most people took a step back and said, well, what, what's better, to, to own something or lend money to somebody? I could probably rather own it most yeah, of the time. Yeah. And the, the historical performance of the market would bear that out. Um, and then the other way is cash. And cash is awesome right now because yeah. you can have almost no risk and right. get 4 or 5% on right. your money, which is... That's pretty... I mean, for, some of us in this room haven't seen that. <laughs> <laughs> some of us have. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. I mean, I, I remember way back in the day, and I was just a kid, right? I was cutting grass and... My mom was always good about, hey, save your money, save mm-hmm. your money, and I'd, I'd get a CD, right? Yeah, yeah. And those suckers were paying like 10 and 12 yeah. and 15 percent. That's right. I'm like, wow. Yeah. And you know, but uh, then we go through the pandemic, and it was down to what 0. 0.02. Yeah, right. You know, so you weren't making anything. It's like you, you put it under your pillow, yeah. and you'd almost make as much as in the bank in that case. Yeah. But now it's not bad. Like it's not said, bad, and then you can make four or five percent. Yeah. And not, you know, I just I have those conversations. Those that's probably the most. Now that the market's doing well yeah 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 <laughs> um people have had a lot of you know cash sitting around sure. like i feel like i should be doing something with my cash what sure. should i doing so that's a certainly an individualized conversation but yeah, the yeah. money markets have been good you know we have one we have clients in for goals that would um, need a money market and cds you know the, the only thing with cds people just need to know they are they're a contract so right, sure. you, there's a there's a fee there's a penalty to break it before the maturity of the right. cd but cds aren't a bad place to live if you don't need yeah, the money right. for a certain period of time yeah. locking it up in a two-year cd getting you in the fives with some yeah. of these banks maybe higher right, right. not a bad place to be yeah, especially for right. um and that's probably the you know, again, not direct advice, but yeah. for someone who had a, a per home purchase goal in the next couple of years, like I can't in good yeah. faith invest their money in the market because if it goes down 20%, right. I can't do that to them. Yeah. But a, but, um, a money market's a great place, and it's certainly in this environment, it's doing much better than your typical savings, which is right. a mm-hmm. yeah. which is great. But a, a CD or a money market type instrument is great, yeah. a great tool to help them get, get that, their down get payment down, for a home right. purchase. Yeah, because we, we talked to a lot of folks who were doing exactly that. Their goal, you know, they may not be wanting to buy it today, but we love talking to people who want to buy in yeah. two a year years or two. Or yeah. You're going to want to sell homes yeah. on, aren't you? Yeah. 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 <laughs> we're all in, so we got to, yeah, we want to sell them today. We want to yeah. sell them in 10 yeah. years. So yeah. if somebody's looking to do that, that's a great, you know, put it in your a little money market, yeah. save up to that down payment. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it doesn't have to be a huge down payment, folks, just so you know, it doesn't have to be 20%. No, not anymore. No. But, um, Talk about inflation a little bit. That's like, as I understand it, right? That's kind of your one of your bigger risks, kind of in a way, right? When you're talking about investing, is kind of yeah. staying up with it, or what? Or I I think, think that inflation is probably the biggest risk. Is it? Okay. I think it's much more. I think it's much greater than your your market, your money, your account going down for right. uh, what has historically always been a finite period of time. Right. Um, we know the Dow. This morning hit an all time. I hit over forty thousand, which is just an arbitrary number, but it's kind of sensational. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> inflation, you know, everything is getting more expensive. Sure, yeah. things are not going to go backwards. Right, you know, we right. talk about that a lot in our, our weekly meetings yep. um, with other people in our group. But there, it's not like the price of gas is going to go down fifty percent or groceries right. go down fifty percent. Then the pace might slow, and we hope it does. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. we have to build a plan for people that has their money outpacing inflation. Right. So if the historical inflation rate is somewhere in the neighborhood of three-ish percent, right. going back 80 some odd years, yeah. and our, our stock market, meaning specifically the S&P 500, has done about 10, yep. okay. your margin, your net purchasing power yep. is about seven. seven. 10 minus right. three is right. seven. And then, um, and that's a conversation we have with people all the time. Like that's, so when, when I talk to folks who are like, well, tell me about, what do you think about gold? Is gold a good hedge against inflation? I'm like, well, yeah, maybe, but not as good as being invested in a broad, um, assortment of, of different kind of equities sure. that have yeah, yeah. traditionally outpaced inflation by a lot. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's great. That's awesome. Cool. Um, so, uh, home ownership, obviously. Yeah. Right. The American dream, baby. The American dream. Yeah. Right. I mean, obviously, the podcast a little bit about real estate, but we want to educate people mm-hmm. about all kinds of areas. Yeah. So, um, I, I had a quote that I that this is from Lawrence Yoon, who is the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. Now, he said this back in April twenty three. He said a monthly mortgage payment is a forced savings account and helps homeowners build a net worth about 40 times higher than that of a renter. Mm-hmm. Holy cow. That's um, a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's huge. A lot. That is huge. Um, I guess, you know, from, a, from an investment advisor standpoint, um, how, how does the home ownership play into like your client's overall net worth strategy and stuff? Does that, in their it's, role, is that a big It's a big It's got to be, right? It's a huge part. I mean, yeah. generally, 
that is your largest asset for a long time. Yeah. Maybe some point your saved retirement gets over right. that or, yeah. you know. Um, but I don't talk to a lot of people that that's not a goal of theirs. I mean, it's a goal for most people, yeah. whether they're in a home now and they want a second one or they, it's time to upgrade, you know, their mm -hmm. life's changed, they've added kids, sure. they want to move to different neighborhoods. So that's a, that's a big planning piece. And yeah, it's a huge part of people's net worth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, when we plan for real estate, we we're, we're very confident that the real estate value is going to go up. Over, maybe not year to year. You know, you see that. Right, right, but right. But we, over we know time, that, yeah. again, it's just like you mentioned. Over the time, the market seven percent ish, mm -hmm. or ten percent, whatever that mm -hmm. number is, and homes are kind of the same, two to three yeah. percent. It seems like yeah. over if you go back a long, you know, long period of time, that little it doesn't sound like much, right? But that two percent, mm -hmm. but it adds compounded it adds year up. after year after year is it's unbelievable. Yeah, how, how that can yeah, happen. it is, and. You know, and also owning a home and paying down your mortgage and building more equity, that's obviously going to help your true net worth. It also frees you up to do other financial things. Like right. if, you know, we have clients that will put a mortgage on one house and then go buy a second one and um, right. you know, all sorts of different things people can do. But right. yeah, but real estate, I, I don't know that I've talked to anyone that's like, no, I just plan to rent for the rest of my life. Really? Yeah. That's good. Oh my God. That's I good can't think of anyone talking about That's good news yeah. for us. Yeah. I, I think uh, roughly, I think in America, two thirds of the people own their homes mm -hmm. and about yeah. a third rent. So uh, congratulations to the two thirds there. We'll help the other third. Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. That's good. But um, let's see, I was, I was just thinking of something along those lines now and I kind of lost my train of thought. Um, what was I going to say? I don't know. Maybe about like rentals or something. Oh, about yeah, kind kind of about um, about renting. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously one thing that w when we're talking to folks, they're paying somebody's mortgage. Yeah. They're paying somebody's mortgage, right? Or the, or the the landlord's doing it wrong. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I have a couple of rental houses, yeah. right? So obviously, I you know I I don't do it for charity. I mean, I should maybe, <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Less what a nice guy house. you are, Jim. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I mean, you know. I've had tenants pay off entire houses almost, mm -hmm. which yeah. is amazing to me. But um, again, I think it's having that long-term perspective no matter what you do. Uh, yes. And home ownership is definitely one of those things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, $396,200, this was from 2022, was the median net worth of a homeowner versus $10,400 yeah. for a renter. That just blows it's a my big, mind. big asset. When I see that, yeah. it just kind of blows my mind. Yeah, it's a it's a big, big asset. And the kind of the kind of things you know, I work with someone like you and some like with our mortgage advisor associates and everything. We just want to make sure that the it's a big asset person, usually a big yeah. chunk of debt. Like yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. a big oh, sure. it's a big pendulum. It's a big lever or whatever yeah. analogy you want to use. We just want to make sure it's in the context in their financial plan. There's some rules of yeah. thumb. You know, don't have more than I don't. I'm just gonna throw it in up like twenty percent of your. Um, income go towards your home and servicing the right. debt and all that sort of thing, right. uh, whatever that that figure is. Right. So if someone who come in, you know, we just want to make sure that it's appropriate and it's right size for them. Yeah, for and sure. Everything. For sure. Would you say that like homeowners typically have more of a savings built up than renters do? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think that statistic about their net worth being thirty yeah. times over for renters. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's what I see. That you know, right? in the yeah. trenches, baby. Yeah, in the trenches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they. They've worked, you know, they've had a plan. Um, most people don't just kind of willy-nilly buy a home. They've kind of put yeah. some thought into it. Yeah. Maybe not, you know, that's why they need to work with people like you and me. So they're thinking about the things that, seen around corners that you've seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, you know, situations we've dealt with too. Yeah, over, you know, through through the COVID period when interest rates, mortgage rates were in the, you know, low threes Three. or whatever, mm -hmm. it would, it, you know, we would talk to our clients and they'd be like, well, should we pay our mortgage down ah. faster? Yeah. And I'm like, not if you got three percent. Yeah. Right. Also, not advice, but absolutely not. That's not advice. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Pay the minimum payment. Let you know at yeah. if you have three yeah. percent. I mean, and, and then do you know? Invest the difference. I call yeah. Todd. That's what yeah. I was always telling. And then you know, get a get a good financial advisor. Invest that. Three percent's cheap debt. Three percent. Super is, cheap. Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. And and that's you know obviously in our market right now that's one of the reasons we don't have a lot of inventory because right. a lot of people do have those and they don't want to sell. No. They don't want to get rid of those. That's exactly right. Either. I think it's great, but uh, and and I guess so as people get getting uh, up towards their retirement and whatnot, mm -hmm. that equity they build in their home can, can help with their retirement. Obviously, if they need mm -hmm. to yeah. borrow against a house, sure. Do, do you have any thoughts on like reverse mortgages? That might be a kind of a out of the blue question for you, and maybe something you don't even deal with. But I'm just kind of curious. I've I don't deal with it directly. Obviously, you know, I'm not a mortgage advisor, yeah, but I right. do. We, I work with a great one. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. 
And, you know, I, I think it's, unfortunately, I think it's marketed to people, um, and I don't think they necessarily always know what they're getting themselves into. Yeah. It sounds great on paper, like, oh, you'll right. take yeah. ownership of my house and I'll get a stream of income, and that's great. I think so we come across one situation where it was the right answer. It was the right answer, and that we tried to go through with it, and they ended up going with my recommendation and with another guy. That's yeah. fine. <laughs> um, so, no, I, I don't see that a lot. Um, hopefully, we've put them in a position help them along the way to get in a position right. financially where they can own the asset, not need to take income off of their right. asset and lose the asset eventually if yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. they pass or, or whatever. And um, they can kind of have the, have the asset and then at some point, you know, many people end up leaving their homes and they have to sell it or sell right. it to their kids or right, whatever right. they do. Yeah. Sure. And then, yeah. yeah. Um, talk a little bit, if you would, about like helping folks plan for retirement. Not that I'm ever gonna do that. But mm -hmm. no. Do you, can you share some thoughts on that for Oh, me? man, yeah, I can share lots of thoughts. I mean, I know you could probably talk for hours on that, but just kind of, uh, I guess the first thing that comes to my mind is like like Medicare and stuff, yeah. but, but then uh, uh, just to take Social, Social Security, Security. Yeah. What kind of thoughts do you have on those kind of, I know it obviously varies on the person, yeah. but just kind of generally speaking. Okay, so certainly when you're in your working years, you know, we call those the accumulators. So. Yeah. My job is to help them figure out how much they need to save and where they need to save it. Um, you know, asset allocation, diversification, yeah. um, what kind of accounts. So there's a lot of like kind of tax planning, sure. uh, not a CPA or, you know, I took six hours of accounting. I'm still mad I got to be in one of them. <laughs> uh, but there's a lot of there's a lot of build up to get to the point where, OK, now we're we've, we've got our number. We've reached our, our point where we feel like. You know, we, we have enough money that we can live on for the rest of our lives. Now, how do we put all the other pieces together? Right. So I love getting, uh, I usually ask clients when they get to a certain age, like, let's let's look at a Social Security benefit statement. Right. So you can go on ssa.gov and grab one of those. Okay. Um, and it's just an estimate until you get, like, right up to the finish line. But, yeah. you know, you can take Social Security as early as 62 or as late as, uh, as, late as 70. Oh, okay. And everything in between. And then there's a full retirement age. So there's a lot of different moving pieces right. about when the optimal time to take that sure. for people is. So sure. normally I would like, if you're working, you probably shouldn't take social right. If you're full time, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, then you can get probably sideways on that pretty quick. Yeah. Um, I know enough about Medicare to be dangerous and moreover know enough exactly who to refer people to yeah, Medicare yeah, yeah. help. Right. Um, it's a confusing world, the rules change, I it's different imagine. state to state. Right. So partnering with somebody who's focused on Medicare has been a yeah. really a game changer for me as people That's get to great. that. But that's part of it, you know, we do have a lot of people, if we're doing a great job, they can retire much earlier than Medicare, well, maybe yeah. not much, but early enough that they need to, yeah. you know, go out to the uh, exchange and find healthcare. So right. we, mm -hmm. we do budget that into their plan. That's so right. right now we're budgeting like 10,000 bucks a year for yeah, between your retirement and 65. Yeah. From, and obviously just a little out of pocket for Medicare. But, yeah. um, but it's a puzzle and everyone's puzzle is different. And, right. you know, we get through the accumulation phase We've, we've gone through our, our planning software and we've gone through what we call a Monte Carlo of simulation of returns over time. Mm -hmm. And like, we're good. Like, yeah. And that's generally the easiest part to show them is that's gotta that be, the dollars work. Yeah, yeah. that's gotta be super rewarding. Yeah. Like working with folks for a, over yeah, a extended it is. period the best of time part. and then seeing yeah. yeah, it's the best part. And they, that's awesome. yeah, it's, it's great. Um, <laughs> and, then, and then the distribution's a whole nother. Then you, you, yeah. you meet people that have saved their whole life and they're like, doing a great job saving, like getting them to take their money out is right. like pulling teeth. <laughs> you know, it's like, they don't know what to do. Like especially, it's okay to take a little yeah, while. It's hey, like, go do and, something. Yeah, and furthermore, fun. when you get to 73 or 75, <laughs> they make you take it out. Like oh, you right, have, right, 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 yeah. okay, that's awesome. Yeah, minimum distributions are for, for accounts that have never been taxed, the IRS, it's like, it's time to pay the piper, Yeah, yeah you got to sooner or later. Yeah, yeah sooner or later, yeah. they're gonna get you. Awesome, all right, right cool. Any other questions that you can think of? Man, this is no. Been, I think we've talked about everything from the beginning great. to like the end of the yeah. It's been phase. great information. Thank you. Yeah. You're very Thanks welcome. For Thanks for having me and, and doing it, folks. I guess just to kind of wrap things up, um, <laughs> man. Make sure you have somebody like Todd on your team as you kind of go through life. From your hopefully you buy your first house with us. <laughs> And then you retire with Todd. Yeah. But I mean, if you know, we'll have fun. I promise. Yeah, it'll be a, good, it'll be a fun trip for sure. But no, thanks again for coming, man. Great. We really appreciate oh, it. Thank you. And uh, thanks for thanks for thanks listening for to the show, oh, folks. Uh, we'll see you next time we'll on. See you uh, next time. Getting real with real estate. Getting real with oh real my estate. goodness! I was going to say so in St. Louis. <laughs> getting real with real estate. All right, we're out. Podcast. We'll see you later. <laughs> awesome. You've been listening to Getting Real with Real Estate with the Kemp Team. Have questions about real estate or something you'd like to discuss? 
contact the Kemp team at 314-336-1926 or visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Kemp team. Don't want to miss any episodes? Follow us on your favorite podcast app or YouTube. The Kemp team, real, honest, real estate.